Sophia has generously agreed to answer some questions for us, uh, but she's gonna take a minute to switch gears. It's a very different mindset for an artist performing a work versus talking about it. So we'll give her a minute. Uh, in the meantime, please submit your questions for Sophia using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And we'll get to the questions that we can. Um, sort of by way of introduction, and while we give Sophia a minute, I thought I would give you a little bit of background on the project. And the idea for this project was hatched during the depths of 2020, uh, when many people, myself included, felt uncomfortably unstable. Um, all the norms of daily life seemed to have shifted, and every experience of art was mediated by a virtual platform. And you know they are right now. You think about online art exhibitions, recorded symphony performances and plays. So I started wondering how an artist could make work that addressed this virtual translation or mediation within the form itself while living in the middle of all of the limitations put upon an artist by the pandemic. So wondering how these current realities uh, impacted the artistic process. And Sophia brilliantly turned this prompt into Sobreon. So thank you for joining us again, Sophia. Uh, you can unmute yourself. And I want to start by thanking you for being so vulnerable with your work and willing to experiment uh, with us. And maybe we can start by, can you tell us how you approached thinking about this project? Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that it started in a way, it's kind of like an inverse proposition in the sense that something you and I talked about a lot was how early in the pandemic, everything just felt like it pivoted into a digital mode, even when that wasn't necessarily the right vehicle. I'm thinking about exhibition making and programming. There wasn't any time to kind of reflect on the moment. And I, I sort of really resisted that for a while. And by the time you and I were having a conversation, I felt like I was more in a kind of rhythm with my own making in the studio and this became really exciting because it meant that I, because of my own kind of objections, I needed to create something that was specific to Zoom, like treating Zoom as a material. Um, and I think that that was sort of the underlying kind of architecture. But I will say that in a lot of these, even though they're, I write instructions for myself, they're really improvised. And I think that that's been met with sort of interesting kind of artifacts and in a way a collaboration with zoom and itself because it, it shifts things so much just by what it's meant to do which is not this yeah um but i'm kind of I, I, that became kind of an exciting um aspect of it as well and thinking about i mean working with zoom so in your practice you perform live with an audience as well as make videos performing for a camera. Mm -hmm. So Sodeon kind of falls oddly between those two things. The audience is here, you can't see them, neither can I, you only see the camera. So how did you approach thinking about liveness via the interface of the screen? Yeah, I think that while, while it is actually, I hadn't thought of it that way, but it is sort of solidly in between. It's also, um, in a way, it, uh, it it pools together the more the most uncomfortable part of both, mm. you know, because live performance, there's an audience feedback. So even if it's like obscure experimental stuff, you can feel the bodies in the room, you know, mm. even if they're not like swaying and dancing, there's an energy that's like very real. And when I do video performance or performance that's deliberately to be process through a camera and for a screen there is this really big removal like the the audience feels so distant at that point that i it gives me kind of a freedom of performance and so being here um for example last week's was really um tricky because it felt like that one weirdly felt like the most vulnerable and then it was over you know and then i couldn't there wasn't the like either audience feedback or 
and again feedback can just be sort of energetic but mm-hmm. it was sort of like I was dropped in the void which is what usually happens when I perform like for a camera but but I figured out how to feel good around that whereas this was like where am I so it was really decentering but it was in an interesting way it made me really think a lot about you know I had to really sit with that feeling and I think that writing for this for this context and so and, and learning each one sort of was a learning experience for the next culminating in this one um I had to kind of built it with this trust in an invisible audience um and that was a little scary but I think ultimately it for me as a process it was really um generative and, and productive it's interesting um for me as a viewer watching it it the videos have been both strangely intimate and distant so like the the first one you know we see you sitting in your sitting in your space and with the way the narrative was it almost it's almost as though we weren't supposed to be there like we were just watching uh you in your space journaling or something um but then the second one the way you were literally an image in the performance space of the screen. So your your video Zoom screen was one of the images that you were manipulating. It almost felt like you, creator at the time, were not there. You were just one of these manipulatable things, um, like you as your own material kind of idea. So I thought that was a really interesting way to work with this medium of zoom that is both so distancing and so intimate at the same time Mm -hmm. yeah i really i'm glad that it like that that it became that sort of in in the accumulation of these but it was important to me at the beginning when i knew nothing of what this experiment would like materially look like or feel like by the end that it that it would have some trajectory, even if those trajectories can kind of overlap and go in reverse or whatever, but just that I was in a sense coming closer to to an audience in the process over the three that happened, but that there was sort of a built in distance from the beginning, you know, that 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 this feeling of kind of the camera invading the workspace or the studio space or the home space in my case because i live work as you can hear um that became that was really important because i feel like i also wanted to address the ways in which zoom and telecommuting and all of this has infiltrated everyone's lives it's not it's not just the art world that's gone that's gone into this sort of digital kind of panopticon it's everything and something that I I just really resented that in the beginning how the workplace just sort of pushed itself into my house and this all-seeing eye was in my house Mm -hmm. and so I wanted my my sort of position to feel like it was sort of moving close and farther and closer and farther until like this last one kind of felt like I could really be present and combine kind of the digital image and then like an embodied performance, like they, like this was sort of the point of arrival. Yeah, I think this this third performance and thinking about materiality was super interesting. In that, it, what comes across to me is just the the messiness of materiality, and not in a not in a pejorative sense, but in a porous sense that all of these yeah. things are just flowing in and out of each other with your you know your projected computer screen and your dog I don't know if your dog you planned for your dog to run in <laughs> she did great we were worried she was gonna bark but she she just did a little shadow puppetry for us <laughs> and then with your I mean with your baby and I don't know as a mom myself thinking about motherhood as material and the messiness of that is just so apparent in the work that you're doing I think it's great <laughs> And I think too, I mean, there's this very obvious juncture of those things where I just feel like every person I know who has children or works with people who have children, their kid, it's part of that invasion of the home space. And I feel like it's it's such like a move, right? Like you have the kid coming in, right? There was like in the early days of the pandemic, there was that guy whose kids like it went viral, whatever. The point is it's like, 
it's part of this struggle that I feel is very, re like very, very real for a lot of us. There's this tension between like this format entering our home space. And I, I wanted for this one to really court indeterminacy and improvisation and chance and just let the baby be in it and let the dog be in it. You know, everybody, everybody come in. Um, so I, so that it could really mark this moment, right? Like um, I wasn't, I didn't set out to make like pandemic art because I feel like we're gonna be saturated with that when this is all said and done. But I wanted to make something that did reflect this struggle with this technology and how it's both helped us to kind of stay active in a laboral space, but also I feel like it's so intrusive um, and so um, ever present. Do you think these sort of sort of rephrasing a question that we have about whether you'll continue continue to use this Zoom material after we go back or after in-person interaction continues, or I guess even broader, whether this kind of porousness that you've been talking about and invasion to take kind of the negative spin on that, whether that is gonna continue to impact your work moving forward. I mean, I feel like this was, I discovered a lot. Um, I think that anytime an artist has to kind of throw themselves at new knowledge, there is a tremendous fear and mostly it's filled with failure, but there is so much to be gained from walking in uncertain territory. Um, so for me, I think that actually it was technology, technologically very um, edifying. Um, I feel like I will bring a lot into the work, maybe not necessarily in like, like literally using it as a communicative device, but hi Cleo, but using it as a, as a, it was really useful for me to think about images on images, like, like really that became really physical and really layered in a real way through this process. Well, everyone's coming back. Are you coming to take a bow? Um, so it, I think that that was a really good takeaway. I will say this, and I think that this is something that I, I want, it's important for me to say after kind of saying so many, having so many doubts about Zoom, um, is that one thing that I think, that's what we were afraid she was going to do in it. Um, one thing that I think is really important to take away from this is that these technologies as much as I'm struggling with them, and I and I will put the blame of that in in the sort of work aspect of things, is that these technologies are really important in terms of accessibility and in terms of access. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this time has been really difficult for a lot of folks. But I think that there's also a lot of folks that I mean I I can only speak to the art world, but I know so many folks that just cannot make it physically to every performance or every lecture or anything. Yeah. And this has been incredibly useful and incredibly powerful in disseminating all manner of of works and ideas to people that just because of accessibility issues are not able to um participate more and so that's something that i really want to um carry over um from this experience it may not necessarily be zoom but i'm really interested in what it, what possibilities exist within the sort of like broadcast framework. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I'll say about that is that it does remind me of something just to not give Zoom all the credit. Something that I really love, which is public access television. Um, and this has kind of, you know, some uh, the the like the scatter shot of, of, of things that are available for you to like watch and consume at any time is so varied now that it, it kind of has that vibe and some that's something that I wanted to kind of bring into this like you're just sort of like flipping the tv like that's not anything anyone does anymore but oh, it's if, like if remember, in the olden day <laughs> 3 a.m and you're like watching public access and something miraculous and weird happens and it's sort of like did I was I alone in seeing that all of that. So I think that that um, that's something that that this reminded me of in a way that kind of spun this to be positive and not not all about like the eye looking at us. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, especially at the in the first performance, was thinking about cable access, late night, Wayne's World kind of references, and then I was like, oh, I dated myself just now. <laughs> <laughs> I love public access all day.
<laughs> With the technology, there's a question about uh, translation and maybe related to the the kind of inherent limits of the medium. So like working with Zoom, for example. So we figured out that there are background filters, you know, to keep out noise since it's a meeting software to keep right. out this and some of the subtler sounds that you had in the first performance got dropped, we didn't hear. Or the video in the second performance with your video screen, the the there's a looping delay. So the words that you were saying weren't in sync with your lips as you spoke them. But I, I actually, thought it was a really interesting way to visualize discontinuities inherent in translation or maybe inherent in delay, delays inherent in virtual communication. Um, I guess so within this project, was there is there a way that you thought about translation and delay in that sense through the medium? I think that the way it started to, again, and this was because it's so cumulative, right? Um, we were learning as we were going along, but they, we had so many conversations about leaving those things as artifacts of this medium. Um, and as I've had time to reflect on the first two specifically, that to me kind of became like a like a really nice marker of actually the physical distance because it's that's obviously not why it's happening um but it felt like it was akin to you know shouting to someone over a chasm and then like an echo moving the sound across you know so it it actually made me feel closer to an audience and it made this feel like what it is which is performance right like we, i didn't i could have pre-recorded these right and like let them happen but i sacrificed a lot of the sort of technical pristineness that i like would typically work with and then like develop over time um to again feel like it was risk-taking and also feel like whether I succeeded or failed, I don't know, but like that there was an actual attempt at connection um, because I do feel like the, that's one of the reasons this was attractive to me in the first place. Like how can I kind of rework the space to feel connected to people in a way that is just impossible right now? I think that's one of the kind of really powerful things about the way you frame this project that you didn't Pre, to want to pre-record them and you know exert the same level of control that you that you usually use although you use a lot of improvisation in your work mm -hmm. live performance anyway so you, you you're kind of someone who can let stuff go in some ways <laughs> totally no 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 totally but you know i think that that's true but i always kind of feel like I can count on, like if i can like if i know the sound is going to sound a certain way and i know that the video is gonna sync up, you know what I mean? Like these things give me a false sense of security and then I can kind of leap into the improvisation. Whereas this felt like every aspect was improvised, you know, like whether it was like, like the last one, I, I used uh, the screen share feature because it was, it's the one thing I've used the most in my Zoom life, right? The screen share feature is everybody's using it, but I wanted to like complicate it for myself. And again, kind of push at the edges of what it's meant to do, which is convey information clearly and succinctly, mm -hmm. and instead kind of jam it and like throw as much into it as I could and see what started to happen. And yes, there was some degradation as a result, but I think that that was also important to me in really not, you know, if I was gonna do this on Zoom, then I was really gonna do it on Zoom. And so part of that was also using this, again, this technology, which has a very specific um, objective, which is to help people chat with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to really kind of break that, if you will. Yeah, I think that's, the Zoom as a vehicle for communication, I think you also addressed really well in, in each of the three going from, Maybe the most narrative or most uh, articulatable in words at the beginning, and then you know, then moving, and then to this third one was much more about uh, sound and like I don't know, guttural, emotive. This is what the moment is. This is the the material. So using a vehicle of communication to express something without words. Um, 
I think was a really interesting way to to end that. And I wanted to move into that because I mean I knew I I knew I wouldn't be able to do that in the first one just because and the first one I didn't know what was gonna happen. I really didn't know what was gonna happen. And so excuse me, you okay? Thanks to Matt. <laughs> um but I wanted to move I wanted to move into it also with like my own comfort, right? In this mode of performance. And so this one, because of the theme, but also because, cause you know, there, as you now know, they each had a theme, but all the themes overlapped every time. Mm -hmm. um, with this one, I wanted it to be embodiment and I had to build to that. You know, I couldn't, it, it couldn't start with that. Even though there were sound elements and sort of there were echoes of this in the first one. Um, I really wanted this one to feel like, like fully using the space of this space and this space and like really fill it up. Um, and I think that I needed to build to that and materiality just felt like kind of the right place to park that because for this, the materials, as you saw, were sort of amassing conceptually but this one was like the body being with those materials and, 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 the, and the struggle that it's been to produce and think and all of these things within the kind of constraints of the last few months, almost a year. Ongoing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sophia, I don't wanna keep you because I, I know how much energy that takes to perform and then, then to speak about it. So thank you so much um, for for thinking with me on this project and really, I don't know, really taking it beyond where I ever could have thought um, someone locked in their house during a pandemic with a baby and a dog <laughs> could could ever take it. So congratulations and thank you so much. Thank uh, you for the prompt. I would just be hating on Zoom and now I'm like, maybe, maybe it's mildly worthwhile. No, I'm kidding. But don't spend too much time on it, people out there. Right. <laughs> Beautiful day out. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us. And just a reminder, if you missed any of the performances, they are all on a dedicated page um, on our website. And please check it out. Thank you so much. And we will see you all next time. <laughs>